I'd like to thank Smokestack Roasters for hosting this. They, uh, I heard, had quite a big event last night, so I'm surprised they're on their game. <laughs> but I would also like to thank uh, Public Access Channel for filming, and I believe someone from the Sentinel is supposed to be here. Hi, right, welcome. Um, <clears throat> Since we are a business association, I have asked the candidates to please stick to the topic of their ideas on how to generate businesses in our community and how to retain them. Um, we're trying to keep short, so I'm asking the candidates five, ten minutes to speak. Then we want to open it up to questions. Kathy, I understand you have to leave early, so I'm going to have Kathy speak first, Dina second, Dan third. And with that, Kathy, I give the floor to you. Good morning. Thank you, Wendy. Um, thanks to the LBA board, too, for hosting this. I want to apologize for having to have to cut out a little early. Um, I'm Kathy Clark, Republican candidate for the 37th District. Um, I actually have the unique um, aspect that I also own a small business in town. I bought my business in December 2014. My business still exists today. It was retail for two years, and then I flipped it over to website-based, and it now provides flowers, just website-based and community-based. Um, I also have the uh, unique aspect of being a realtor in town. I've rented many spaces at the village. Um, more recently, we have a new tenant going in, which I'm thrilled to say, another new business in town. Um, an esthetician that's actually moving in right next to my office. Um, I've also rented to some of the other businesses in the village, such as Salon Bliss, um, Ignite Fitness, um, the Pilates Studio, and Saranovitz and Company. Um, I also have rented three Lancaster Ave, which is now actually available for rent. So if anybody has any interest in that building, um, the owner is, is willing to entertain some ideas in terms of restaurants or anything of that nature. We've talked about an aspect of an incubator project as well, which I think is a wonderful idea and is some forward-thinking, you know, thoughts for the community. Um, in looking at recent business closings in town, including Dragonfly, Simon Pure, Kebabalicious, and Sean Patrick's, my first thought is each business is unique in when they chose to open um, and why they chose Lunenburg to come to. Um, Lunenburg's in the midst of forming an economic business development committee and I think that's really vital to all the committees or all the towns I should say. I think Acton actually does have an economic business committee right now and I think it's important to look to some of the other towns that have been um, successful in promoting some of their businesses um, I think it's important to look at some of the issues around that as well. Um, some of the hurdles that we have in now for the, the high cost of doing business, regulation, payroll and state taxes, and energy costs. I've been a proponent of um, municipal choice. I've been outspoken for 12 years on municipal choice. Um, if I'm elected, I do uh, plan on authoring uh, legislation that will help bring us rate relief. Um, and I think that that bill will also help other communities such as Acton, such as Shirley, um, because National Grid is also an investor on the utility. Um, if anyone would like for the detail of thoughts on small business, I welcome the opportunity to connect. My team and I are actually planning a small business crawl this Saturday through the 37th District. Um, we are going to be ho posting it later on today on the Facebook page as well. Again, thank you, Wendy, Warren, and the staff for letting me speak. Thank you, Kathy. Does anyone have any questions for Kathy before she heads out? Then I give the floor to Dina, please. <laughs> thank you. I guess I'm Dina Samfield. Um, I, Kathy lives in Lunenburg. I'm your next door neighbor. I actually live almost in Lunenburg, and my son uh, went to daycare at Little Social Life in Lunenburg. Uh, I love the trails that are connected between Shirley and Lunenburg, and your beautiful open space and your natural resources. And one day I was walking at Robs Hill, and I met this wonderful woman named Virginia Albertson, and she started talking about the Lunenburg pollinator habitat. Uh, and my 
ears perked up, uh, partly because my master's thesis was on native wildflowers, albeit in Texas, but also as the um, yeah. former committee chair of my Boy Scout Troop 7 at Shirley, uh, and the parent of a prospective Eagle Scout, I thought, Eagle Project. So uh, my son did an eagle project at the pollinator habitat. He planted some natural, some native ground covers and put in a butterfly puddler and a bench. And that's a wonderful resource there. He met with the conservation department with Ken uh, Jones and Ginny. And um, that's just one of the many things that I know that the Business Alliance and your Eco Economic Development Council are promoting. Um, it's so important to have an economic development committee where you have people from all around the, the town to give input so that you can assess your assets and uh, your opportunities and whatever uh, threats and weaknesses you might have. Um, and the Business Alliance is such an important part of all of that because you can promote your businesses through uh, social media. You've got some wonderful newspapers here uh, to help you publicize all of the things going on, like your arts festival coming up. Um, your, um, I've seen a lot of news about the well, potential the skate keys. park. Um, so there's a I'll lot look, of look wonderful, look. I believe very much in uh, promotional, uh, regional promotion and regional collaboration with other towns as well, so that you can really make full use of all of your assets and uh, publicize them uh, the best way. You've got this wonderful Neshoba Valley Chamber of Commerce that uh, has the economic development group that can give you the microloans such as the ones that this business uh, has has gotten and has helped them to get started. Um, you have the Center for Women and Enterprise. You have the Montechusett Regional Planning Commission that's helping with the district local technical uh, assistance. And um, so the problem though I know is that there's a lot of fast growth in our rural communities and we are always struggling to maintain the character of our towns, our rural character, historical character, while at the same time bringing in more tax revenue and having a thriving community and a thriving business community. Um, so there are different ways, as you know, to have your businesses uh, promote each other, to give discounts for new uh, for people coming into new businesses, but you have to also have uh, really good zoning bylaws that are clearly written to help people uh, who want to start businesses be able to make inroads in your community. So I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. Um, as your state representative, I would be there for constituent services. I would be there to work with your town leaders to help you achieve your goals. Um, I would be there to help get through uh, home rule petitions and initiatives uh, through committee uh, for a house vote. Um, and I look forward to working with the Hunenberg community on all of those things. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I, I am Dan Cena, and I moved uh, from Brazil to Akron about uh, when I was in junior high. Uh, my wife is a pharmacist. I have two uh, children. My daughter, uh, Juliana, she goes to Douglas in, in Acton, and I have a baby son who's one. Um, and I, I want to rephrase the question, how can my progressive legislative ideas help small business in the rural areas? And that's uh, one of the things that I want to um, address to you today. Um, for example, I think we need better infrastructure. Um, I've been Senator Eldridge's district director for the past six years, and I have had a, the opportunity and the chance to work with the senator to get more funds to create or, or to basically restore a, the, the train station in Acton. Uh, so we have a new uh, train station there. Also, we added more parking. I think that's very important. We have to consider parking as one of the very, you know, people want to be able to park when they go take the train. Um, another uh, program that we initiated that I want to bring into Lunenburg is the shuttle uh, program, the Town Connect. Uh, it's, uh, they have a, a big, they have the cat and they have another pro uh, name there. I have to make sure I have the right name, but it's the Cross Town Connect. Um, so that way, 
you know, individuals can then take the shuttle to wherever they need. For, for example, small business here, if, if you for reverse commuters, for example, they're coming from Boston to work here. If they arrive in Shirley at the train station and they have no ways to get to their employer or their business, uh, we need to change that. We need to make sure we're addressing that issue. Um, also want to make sure we talk about health care, you know, how, you know, passing Medicare for all will be beneficial for business. Because I, I, I have also worked with small business connecting them to the health connector. Because small business, they want to be able to, they want to provide health insurance to their employees, but they need assistance. And I, I have had the chance at the, at the center's office to be able to connect a small business to the health connector, for example, to find what is the best health care that I can get to my employees uh, in terms of cost and benefit for both the employee and the employer. So I think that's very important to keep in mind. Um, another point that I want to address here is climate change. Um, we, we don't know what's going to be the future with global warming and the droughts, for example. We have had two or three years ago, we had a massive problem with water, at least in Acton uh, and, and other towns for sure. And there's a lot of farms here in Ludenberg. We want to make sure that the animals are safe. Sometimes hot wave, you know, heat wave is an issue. We want to make sure that the police, the fire department, and the town staff are prepared to deal with climate change. And I, and I want Ludenberg to be a, a, you know, a climate change uh, resilient uh, community. So we, we talked about Medicare, you know, in terms of health care. Um, talked about transportation infrastructure, that we need more infrastructure here in town. Um, climate change is another one. And the fourth point that I want to address is yeah. passing the millionaire's tax. Because if you think about it, if we pass the millionaire's tax, we can then use those money, that, that money to help small business. And how by doing so, using that money for transportation, for example. Um, and I, I really think that passing the millionaire's tax is important because we're not going to be asking small business to pay more in taxes. We're going to be asking the corporations, for example, closing the loopholes. We ought to close that. Fidelity, for example. How much taxes do they pay? Amazon. I mean, don't we think that big corporations should be paying their fair share so Lunenburg doesn't have to? I mean, we have to think about this issue in a bigger sense. And, and, and I ask uh, that you do. I, I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Um, I, you know, if elected, I also want to work with the bills jobs that we want to make sure that we're addressing micro-lending, like Dina mentioned. It's very important for small business. And I met with Chris and Roy from the Mass Chamber um, of Commerce here in North, uh, in, um, I always forget the name, but the Mass Chamber. And they have this program to help small business. We want to increase that ability. We want to increase, I, I certainly do. Um, and they have another program that it's very important that I want to make sure that I, I, I mention to you here. It's the, Mass Growth Capital Corporation um, that also helps small business. Um, so with, with that, um, I am Dan Cena. I'm your candidate for state representative. I ask for your vote. I ask for your support. And again, I I will be helping small business. I will make sure that their voices and their needs are heard as well in the in the Commonwealth. So I, I thank you with that. If I can give a question to, I'd like to address it to you, Dina. Do you see the transportation between towns as, as being a problem or a solution to getting people to these businesses? Yeah, we really do have a transportation crisis uh, in the state. Uh, there are a lot of things that we need to do. Um, we have the transportation bill um, coming up, but we also, um, which will be a, a, a short-term fix uh, for modernization and also for um, some regional transportation. But uh, I agree that we need to have more long-term uh, annual revenue, and I have some ideas about how we can get revenue for that. But um, the Acton is a model for the cross-town uh, bus system, um, and we really do need to 
uh, worked very hard to improve the roads in the towns, to be able to connect the towns. Right now, uh, if people cannot drive, if people uh, are elderly, it's very difficult for them to get around. Um, there's a lot of regional transportation authorities that uh, imp uh, information that can help us work together to solve in public-private partnerships like they have where you have a regular bus system where you don't have to call ahead like with the mark so that you have to make an appointment to get your um, transportation. Uh, we need to, of course, widen it too, but we really need more trains and faster trains on the Pittsburgh line so that people are not suffering trying to get to work. Unfortunately, a lot of people in Lunenburg happen to work in Lemonster and Pittsburgh and only have maybe a half hour commute. But if you need to get into Boston, it is a nightmare. It's, it's really a tragedy. And we also need to have that north-south link in, in Boston to help us. But I absolutely believe there are a lot of ways that we need to work on transportation so that uh, people can get to work and that people can get to businesses. We've got I-90, we have 2A, we have 2 right here. But there's a lot of uh, problems with uh, people being able to get around in our little rural towns. Does anyone else have any questions? Sure. I'm a I'm a small business owner here in in the center of Lunenburg, and I'm sorry, Kathy Clark had to leave because uh, she's she's from here and she knows what's happening in Lunenburg. I'd like to hear from both of you about uh, very parochially your Lunenburg specific goals or things that you can do to help our business community here in Lunenburg. It's a very good question. I, I've been not door knocking here in Lunenburg. I've been talking to residents here and listening to their concerns. And I want to bring that model from acting here because it's going to vitalize downtown, it's going to vitalize small business, it's going to bring more people to Lunenburg. And I think, I think that's something we can accomplish. Um, I have done it in the past, uh, and I will make sure that we're funding it. We'll make sure Lunenburg is getting their fair share. So I, I certainly would love to sit down with you, maybe to discuss the further ways to help your small business to grow. And uh, uh, that's a great question. As far as being specific to Lunenburg businesses, I do think that um, I know there's been some struggles with the zoning bylaws and trying to uh, help businesses be able to grow in this new town. Um, as a state representative, obviously I'm not going to be writing your bylaws, but I would be trying to help you get through things in the House so that they can be voted out of committee. Um, but it's important to be able to publicize your businesses um, through all of these different networks, through the websites, to have your economic development plan right there on your website. You, I know you have your brochure for your recreation areas, which is very nice on there. That's really important. Um, I think uh, that those are, you know, publicizing them and working with the Neshoba Valley Chamber of Commerce and um, the Small Business Administration, uh, Massachusetts area, Small Business Administration to help small businesses write their business plans. Uh, a lot of small businesses fail because they haven't thought through their plans. And they can also get uh, funding through the, uh, the, the um, development corporation there. Um, we have to do whatever we can to help small businesses succeed. And um, we have the resources in our area, thankfully, to help small businesses. But we also have a problem in Lunenburg where, you know, a lot, most of the taxes are coming from property taxes from homeowners because home ownership, you know, the, the housing situation is really growing fast. And uh, we have some commercial and industrial areas, but um, I'm not sure exactly uh, how we targeted the com commercial and industrial areas for the new businesses, but you've got a really great gravel area. You've got a lot of nice businesses in town, but you'll need to uh, be able to attract more by working with them through your Chamber of Commerce and the other organizations that can help them get started.
they mentioned one thing. Um, about sol solar panels, I think it's very important that we should keep that in mind as we move forward because if we are investing, or I, I want to make sure that small business and business and homeowners are having that tool that they need or their incentives so they can put sun arrays on their roof. I think that's very important. It's going to minimize your uh, electricity bill or maybe not have one at all. Uh, so I want to make sure we're addressing climate change on a way of promoting clean energy, such as solar and wind. I think it's beneficial. Uh, and uh, I don't know if that's a thing that this is worth a while, but uh, also making sure that new future buildings are designed in a way that they can hold uh, solar panels. I know that's an issue uh, across the area. Um, so that's an another way that we can look at uh, you know, promoting more savings. Was, oh, I'm sorry. I was wondering if I could ask a question. <laughs> Is that okay? Sure. Because I really came more to learn about what, what you see as the problems with um, attracting businesses to Longford. And I just wondered if you had things you wanted to, to Sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, I just, um, I have a question for you. It's well, kind of I'd like to, can we just stay on that topic? I wanted to follow I think up you had on something a question correct. on sure. what he was talking about earlier, and it feeds into what he has said. Okay. So you talked about the solar panels, and we also were talking about trying to generate income for the towns to have uh, programs or things that benefit the citizens like the transportation. I got solar panels on my house. It didn't seem to make that much difference because the rate setting commission allowed the suppliers and national bridges to jack up the other fees that I get. We also have a ton of huge solar farms, one on my street, one at the end of, on either end of my street, and in many other places in Charlotte. Can you either of you guys speak about the benefit to the town from all these solar farms that are going in? Are, are we getting uh, Revenue from those folks that own those. How, how does that benefit us? Since you brought up the solar panels. Well, it depends. I mean, we had in Shirley, we had a, a bit of a an issue with the big solar farm that yep. went up on Patterson Road because um, a lot of people in town didn't realize that we had voted. Uh, or I don't know that if we did vote for uh, these giant solar farms, they cut down acres and acres of trees right by our wells to put up solar. And I'm all for solar, but the best carbon sinks are trees. And so uh, I was a little unhappy about that. But uh, I know that they do pay the town some revenue, but in some of these solar farms, the actual electricity doesn't actually go to the town. Um, it's great to put solar, especially in parking lots and on roofs, uh, around uh, in Shirley, around the transfer station, places like that, rather than, you know, if you can help it, don't cut down trees to put up solar. But one of the problems is that there are hundreds of these solar companies that have come across the state, and they start putting in solar before you have your zoning bylaws in place, your solar zoning bylaws, which is what happened in Shirley. It happens in other states, too. Um, now we have a solar zoning bylaw in place. Um, so I am really all for solar, and it can definitely benefit a town. But um, you, if, if you have your zoning bylaws in place, uh, that helps them go in the right areas. Uh, if I follow up to your question, how much percent do you think you benefit from solar on uh, panels in terms of cost efficient for your build? It's a good question that I can't answer because everything is so confusing. So when you have your solar bill coming in and you're benefiting during the summer months, but your uh, suppliers and then the carrier, National Bridges, who I have, are allowed to increase their winter rates, which is when I'm not using my solar panels. My bill comes up the same as before I had solar, but I'm locked into a 20-year contract. So. I don't understand how the rate uh, setting commission is allowing these suppliers to jack up the rates that way. That's, that's something that I will uh, investigate or maybe do some research on and try to make sure that your, your money that you invested, you're getting it back throughout the, the year. So if they're not being fair and they're trying to gain more benefit than 
what you expected initially. Uh, certainly, if we have to file legislation or um, to fix this issue, I will. Um, but certainly, would like to uh, uh, dig in a little further so we can actually get those numbers to make sure that it's a, it's a fair on, on both ends uh, that you're benefiting from the investment that you. Next, if I can. Hi, how are you doing? I'm also a business owner in town. Um, and I'm not sure what the state legislator can do up with, with what we're going to say, other than maybe try to guide the, the town leaders a little bit. Um, but it seems like in Lunenburg, especially, there's this fear of growth and fear of expansion. And I think that's indicative of a lot of small towns that they're afraid of exploding growth too fast. And from what I've observed, there's a lot of housing development going on that is freaking everyone out in town. And they say that that actually doesn't bring revenue into town, it actually costs the town because of the school system, the police, the fire, and all the costs that are involved in having more people in town. And that may be true, I'm not arguing that. Um, but the revenue they bring in taxes isn't enough to offset the people that are in town. That's what they hear a lot. Town. Yet at the same time, the town itself isn't doing really anything to help attract business to town, a source of revenue that can offset the cost of these people coming in. So yes, they're putting together an economic development committee, which is great because it's long overdue. It's really needed. I was hoping they can actually get it together because they've been working on it for a while. Um, but the things that they could do to figure out things like um, utility service around town to the areas that don't have them, that can attract the business to come in uh, and set up shop there. Businesses are always looking at their input costs to do business in town. And so if you look at Ludenburg and Fitchburg and Towns and Charlie, people are going to, businesses are going to shy away from coming there for a lot of reasons. Lack of public utilities, lack of transportation, utility first and foremost. Because their costs are going to be astronomical to run a business. And it's even harder for a small business to be a low end. So I don't know what can be done at the state level to help the town maybe seek the state's help to try to remedy some of these problems of public utilities. Because the fear in town is if you put public utilities in, then it's just going to make more houses come in, more development come in. But if they can redistrict and rezone some areas commercially, so that housing developments won't go in, but you can attract a business to come in and provide revenue in to town without there being a resident. And perhaps they could make some money in the town. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned a very critical issue, which is transportation. I think once you initiate to have that, I think you can attract more people in town and kind of vitalize downtown. Um, uh, the state can, can do a lot of things. Um, I, uh, for example, with utility companies, I think business and residents ought to have an option. I think if they're not happy with Comcast, they can go to Files or with Xfinity, and vice versa with their electricity bills. I think option is good. Right now we have a monopoly uh, that is, you know, uh, something I would like to address. Um, That's they, why. That's why I'm gonna. So how do they break them up? They're they're a company in and of themselves. I didn't just tell them to no longer. Right. I mean, that's something we need to address. That we, you can't just have one option. I, I would like to see at least two businesses and that individuals and business being able to choose who they want to do business with. Because uh, if they're not happy with Unitel for whatever reason, that they can go then to a, a different carrier. Like, a, you know, I think that's important. But um, it just gives consumers more options and business more options. That's one scenario that I'd like to address. I, I for example, I can only have Comcast in my house. I can't have Fios. And I'm. You know, so I want to be able to have consumer options on that, and I think business wants to have that too. Vitalizing transportation, I think, is key here. Uh, to address what you just asked, it's a very good question, and I think transportation is very important. Uh, we lack transportation here, and we, we need to improve it. Um, I, I know small towns have fear of you know becoming a big city in the future, so um, you know, so. I think there's a balance, and we have to 
the town needs to figure that out what that balance is. Uh, we at the state level can't uh, tell what a town should do. We respect the town's voice and you know, we can work with the town to see what their needs are. Um, and I certainly will make sure that funding are getting allocated to, to this area. Um, I, again, I've met with many farmers here, uh, and, and you know they they, they t tell me some of the very same issues that you're telling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have uh, surely an aggregation with uh, utilities uh, with a, a different service from National Grid, which is what we have. Surely, I know in Acton they have uh, a contract with Dynergy to try to have lower cost utilities even though you have um, national grid there. Um, so there are ways to lower your electricity costs even though you're beholden to your utility company. Um, I know Kathy is very strong in the municipal choice. I, I support the municipal choice as well. Um, it's, it may not be very practical because it would be very expensive for a town to start their own utility company, but I think they should have the right to do that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I agree with Dan that uh, <laughs> we really need to uh, have better funding annually for transportation and for education uh, so that we're not uh, always looking to the taxpayers to constantly fund our, our transportation. There are a lot of ways that we can use progressive taxation to fund annually education and transportation that I'm not going to bore you with the details unless you want to know. But um, it, it is a big issue. And as far as the commercial and industrial areas here, I know, for example, in Acton, you know, they, it, it, it's these small towns keep trying to catch up with all the growth and say, whoa, whoa, slow it down. And uh, when they set aside certain commercial and industrial areas, then they found that builders could come in and still build housing in those areas. So then you've got to change the bylaws again. You know, to keep those people from building there. Um, it, it's not easy to manage a small town. Now, I'm actually from North Carolina originally, where we had countywide services, regional services. And uh, then I moved to Massachusetts and found that every little town has their own fire, their own police, their own dispatch, and so on. And the town is not able to fund all of those services. So then. The, the town starts fighting itself, you know, well, we can't fund the schools because we need to fund this. And uh, when I moved to Shirley, they were taking all of this money out of the schools. And um, I was like, well, I'm either going to have to choice my child out of the school district because, uh, like everyone else, which takes revenue out of the town, or I'm going to stay and fight to uh, improve the schools. And fortunately, you have a good school system here in Lunenburg. We worked very hard in Shirley to, well, what happened was at the town meeting where I, I first discovered they were taking all this money out of the schools and they were going to cut the school buses in half, I vowed to start a safe routes to school program. So I started that and that one is a free infrastructure assessment near our school. And then I, we found that the state was giving money for regionalization for school districts. So I was uh, working very hard to get regionalization of our school districts. And we became the first region in a decade in 2011 where they Air Shirley Regional High School. And now my son is a senior at Air Shirley Regional High School, a high school that didn't exist when I first moved to town. Um, Shirley didn't have a high school when I moved to town. Um, so that's a long way of saying that regionalizing services uh, is very useful. I know, for example, with your sewer, you know, you're using Fitchburg and, and Lemonster. Um, you're already regionalizing services, and uh, I'm all for promoting regional uh, solutions to some of these things. Um, it does not really answer your question, however, but um, that's part of part of the solution to being able to fund a lot of the things that small towns simply can't afford. But I wanted to go back to that question, if I might, of what you see as a way to attract and keep businesses in Lunenburg. You were going to say something about that. One, one problem I perceive, uh, is not only am I a small business owner here in town, but part of my business is helping other businesses try to get going. And one of the things that is an obstacle is, and I'm going to sound a little Republican here, uh, regulation. Uh, I've, I've got one 
uh, group I'm helping now uh, that is in front of three different boards trying to do one particular commercial project and that problem is compounded by the fact that these are volunteers and these boards meet every two weeks so if something's not ready to go you've lost two weeks and then it becomes a month and then it becomes three months and they're paying me, they're paying engineers it, and I don't know how you help that at the state level but it's it's a problem, it's a real problem I'm um, sorry, what, what was the problem? Uh, the go government government regulation. We're we're in front of three different committees: conservation, planning, uh, board of selectmen, uh, and they meet. Board of selectmen thankfully meet every week, but the other committees meet every two weeks. And it, it, I mean, the expression is moving at the speed of government, but it's 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 a problem. And I don't I know how we, you address that at yeah, the state level. Uh, I'll, I'll bring an example with constituent inquiries, for example, constituent cases. I mean, for, for example, someone applied for mass health, and their application is pending, and it's because one piece of paper or something was not filled out right, we at the state, at, at, as legislators, we can then do an inquiry with that state agency to try to find out what's going on and expedite the process. Um, so that's what I've been doing for the past six years with you know, SNAP benefits, food stamps, for, you know, in, for individuals who need those assistance. Um, and business we can certainly do that with as well, to make sure that they are applying for grants that would benefit them in order to expand. Uh, there's so many ways we can tackle that issue. One is by making sure that they know that there's grants out there that they can apply for. But sometimes that information is not every, you know, accessible. Um, also, you know, the governor has done a lot of work to to expand some of those grants uh, in his, you know, through the, the channels of uh, application process. I think that's a thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm not sure if I answer your question directly, but yeah, it, um, my my question is uh, more about the the local regulatory agencies over which you probably have very very little influence. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not sure there is a state can, solution. We can serve as a liaison sometimes and, and reaching out to them and also be at those meetings to facilitate the process because I know. The government, we need bureaucracy, but not too much of bureaucracy. Uh, it's, bureaucracy is important to have a, a, a state agency, if, if, you know, run efficiently and in, in an orderly process. But sometimes it delays, and like you said, I think it, it hurts individuals and it hurts business. So I think we need to, uh, you know, I, I would be definitely glad to work on, on that uh, to try to see ways that we can make it more transparent. Uh, those application process make it more clear for business and individuals, so that way, you know, they're not in the, in the limbo, I may say. Uh, very good question. I mean, the millionaire's tax, for example, if we do pass that, it will raise, rent it, generate a lot of money for education and transportation. We can then use those funds to apply to local towns, small towns. Um, it's definitely possible. Uh, it's just working with the town and state agencies. States can allocate funds for, for small towns to initiate the program. For example, a grant application. Once that's done, then it is up to the town sometimes to maintain it. And meaning, an individual probably have to pay two or three dollars to to ride that shuttle, and the town would probably pay the other half. Uh, so 
that's what Acton does. Um, the shuttle service is not free. There's a minimal cost to it. For example, for a year of service, you pay $200. Um, or a one day ride is just a dollar, and if you do it with parking, it's $3. So I think, you know, making the individual pay uh, an amount and also the town with the assistance from the state to at least initiate the program, um, that's what Acton did, and that's what Acton does, and I think we can do it here. Um, so. Uh, the uh, gentleman here was discussing with regulatory at the local level. I understand that the state can dive in at the local board level. We do have control over the regulatory statutes that they govern how local government engages, right? Um, I have to tell you, I'm in the process of purchasing the two family that I live in here in the neighborhood. The other side of the to it should be almost eight months of back and forth waiting for a local board to make a decision along the way. It's going to take almost eight months to go and actually get the permitting done and the septic installed. It's not even that, it's not, it's, it's, it's such a small project. I can't wrap my mind around how inefficient, if I, I'm looking at this and think to myself as a taxpayer, if how is this inefficient? And if the regulatory holy state allows for the temporary dislocation for this little project, what happens when a person wants to go build a great commercial project? What happens when a big project pops up? It's, it doesn't make sense to me. So I would hurt if you have to follow the regulatory statute for the building to rep requirements that, hey, time is ticking, towns have to act in a bad fast manner. I think it's going to be necessary because that slowness in a small town compared to bigger towns and cities that have a faster process is just, this is killing My landlords are divorcing and have to get rid of the property. This is coming oh. through the court. Was this, was this dealing with the Board of Health that, that was the problem? It's, it's been Board of Health and I forget who else the engineer uh, that is doing the, you know, the site work that we've done. I know we had a similar issue, and surely that's part of the, you know, a lot of these small towns, we're not on town sewer and water, yeah, most of us, and um, that is a big issue of having the person from, you know, the Board of Health, who may serve a lot of different communities, be able to come out, that's certainly something to look into, because it is very frustrating, I had the same issue, and then just to get a company to come out and put in something. They just put you off and put you off because they're so busy. Um, it's really hard to schedule. Um, so that's definitely something to look into as far as uh, are there enough people in place to serve all these different communities? It's frustrating. Chris? Quick question following up on both of those in terms of, uh, you know, are there lessons that, you know, in, in, your, in your role as a state representative, are there lessons that you can bring from other communities into Lunenburg, into the, into the surrounding areas that can help facilitate and give some ideas of what direction we can go to? You know, if there's models that have happened in Akron, or if there's models that have happened elsewhere in the state that, that have seen that revitalization or seen that ways to cut down regulation, I mean, is that something that you guys can do in your role as a state representative? I mean, it's investing in transportation. Um, for example, in Acton, for me to go from Acton to LY during rush hours, it takes me two and a half hours, when it really should only take me half hour. So, you know, the quality of life decreases because people are wasting more time commuting. Um, it takes an hour and a half to get to Boston, an hour and a half to come back, and even taking the train. Like, so that's what I, I do, I've been doing. Um, and I, I think we just need to invest in public transportation. Fully take, take this discussion very serious because it's about quality of life for people. And that way you can spend more time with your family members and doing some, a hobby, for example, or something that you enjoy. And I, I think it, it's critical. Uh, it's addressing public transportation. And I, I will be a vocal ally on that uh, because it impacts all of us. It impacts me personally. Um, and uh, with that, I, I, I probably want to close and, and say yeah, thank you, everybody, for being here. Really quickly um, follow up on that, though, because sure. transportation is, is why I am a small yeah. business in Lunenburg. Yeah. You know, I was driving an hour and a half to Waltham, yeah. three hours a day, and, and it, I just couldn't 
I couldn't use that time in the car. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't productive. It wasn't helping my family. So um, now I think other people are in that situation. You know, it just got too painful trying to go into Waltham or into the 95 corridor. Forget about going into Boston on a regular basis. And so. What can we do to then now foster that growth or foster that community? People that want to stay in the community and build a business or grow a business, you know, this is where my kids are, this is where I want to work and give back, and what can you do on a state level to kind of come back and, and help the towns, help the towns be able to foster this business and foster this growth? I think it is a trend that's going to be growing. Um, working with state agencies to make sure those grant applications are there for small towns to invest in their um, initiate a program, such as the shuttle program. Uh, and I, I would definitely be happy to work with the town on, on these issues because I want to make sure that it gets it, it happens. Um, uh, it, you know, there's a model we can use it. Active model is great, but it, it also needs improvement. For example, it, it, now it's actually expanded to other parts of the town. For maybe many years, it was just one shuttle or two in going to three different locations, and it was not serving everybody in town. So it wasn't until later on that they were able to then add other shuttles uh, to the North Asian and the West, you know, uh, to attract more commuters uh, to use that service. So we want to make sure that we're addressing, you know, not in half of the town and making sure that everybody is being able to benefit from it. Um, to get to Shirley and North Glonenberg uh, and Elmster. Uh, so, you know, I make sure that I'm meeting with the town and trying to facilitate that process if I can, uh, in any way possible. Again, by investing, in, you know, I, I'm for double deckers. I want more double deckers on the, on the rails because that way you can increase more scheduling for buses, for trains, uh, get more people out of the, the traffic into the, the train, uh, and also make sure we have proper parking. For example, there is a parking lot behind West Acton Fire Station. They use that parking lot because it was there's 50 parking spaces to in put that shuttle program. So maybe look in areas in town where there's a big uh, parking spot that we can then use, you know, of course, with permission with the town and, and, and working with local officials to make sure that that's a reality. Um, I, I want to see buses going from from here to to El Wife Station, for, for example. I mean, at least in Acton, I, that's an idea uh, I've gotten from constituents by meeting with them. So it's uh, it's it's an issue we have, but we need to address. And I think it's, if we make it a priority, we can make it happen. Yeah, in Acton, they have the Regional Transit Authority work to help with that shuttle system. And then what they did was a, a private-public partnership, which increased the number of uh, buses or shuttles that were going from one place to another. So now they have them from the north part of the town going to the parking by the train, from the south part of the town going there. Um, and like Dan said, only a dollar a, a ride. Um, and we could do something similar out here um, as far as funding, transportation. I feel like we should be looking at the total effective business tax rate, which for Massachusetts is below the national average, which could bring in uh, like $4 million more a year. The uh, global intangible local tax income, which in 2018, for some reason, the legislature decided to decouple from our uh, federal law so that these companies, the corporations who are using offshore tax havens, uh, we should be able to get a lot of that money from those corporations uh, by federal law. We can. Our states around us take about 50% of that income. For some reason in Massachusetts now we only take 5%. You're talking about a huge amount of money that we could have annually for education and transportation. And the, uh, uh, we're actually, uh, the corporate minimum tax in Massachusetts hasn't been changed in 30 years. It's something like $456. And most of the corporations pay that. Um, there's no reason why Massachusetts couldn't have a graduated tax depending on the income of the, of the company. Uh, New York does that. Um, there are a lot of ways. It's not punitive to corporations or big companies. It's just uh, giving their fair share of taxes so that the tax burden for transportation and education doesn't always fall on the lower income and moderate income people in the state. Uh, those are 
things that we need to look at because it's great to say we're going to improve transportation, but even with this big transportation bill being proposed, um, you, that might help solve a problem maybe for five years. We need a more long-term solution for that. I agree that transportation is important, but things that can but I, but I don't feel like in our region it's kind of putting the cart before the horse because you're going to transport people into a town that has nothing to offer because there's no one left. They've all left. So you're going to spend a bunch of money to put in all these systems to get people to come to see nothing because businesses are fleeing the area. So it's kind of cart before the horse. Why not use the, the, the funds you're talking about to build something first? and then get people to come. But think about it. If you have the transportation aspects in place, business is going to want to move into town. You're going to attract small business. Uh, of course, yes, it's better to have small business first and then But if, if there's a way to do it together, uh, because if you, if you have a place where people are coming, and I think small business want to then I mean, know that there's actually a need for this restaurant here in town or this small, uh, you know, um, manufacturer that there's uh, that where workers can get to there, but it's closing the corporate tax loophole. Like I mentioned in my first statement, like Fidelity, Amazon, for example, using those funds to then restore um, the lack of transportation that we have here. And I, I understand what your point is, uh, and, and we need to make sure that the need is there. And I think there is a need, but we need to certainly vitalize downtown so that way there's more business coming to town. Um, I don't know if you've been to Hudson downtown, for example. They it's a model over there. Hudson is doing great. Uh, I want to bring that to many towns in the district as possible. I would have to guess that because the officials in Hudson thought that that was a priority and figured out where Well, we're, we're, we're having this discussion now, so yeah. I think it's a first step to getting yeah. there. Um, you know, the millionaire tax, as I've indicated, that's another way to, to create revenue for, uh, for, for transportation. Um, so I, I think I've answered many of the questions and what I came here to talk about. Uh, I just want to close in my remarks and say thank you for having me here um, and us. Uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity uh, to come and talk to you about these issues that we are facing every single day. Um, I want to make it a, a priority in my legislation agenda, if I may say. Um, I'm you know, talking about climate change, transportation, Medicare for all. Um, in the variety of other issues that we can affect, we can we can certainly have a, we can play a big role to make sure these are happening. Um, and I will not ignore the town. I will make sure that we're working in partnership with the town to make sure this happens. And I'm you know I'm very you can call me. I will listen to you, and we can sit down and we can discuss ways you can make it happen. I want to help Lonenberg. I want to help Shirley. I want to help my community. I live here, and I want to make sure that we're doing what we can to address all your concerns. I think it's very important. I want to just thank you. Um, thank you. Dina, any closing remarks? Sure. Um, I hadn't thought that I would be running for state representative. Um, when Jen Benson resigned, uh, people started asking me if I was running, and I realized that um, I would be perfect for the job. I'm a community advocate. I have been my entire life bringing people together across uh, parties, across age groups, uh, with bringing a diverse group of people um, together to get something done is what I am good at. Um, and I'm a good listener and I understand that in the State House it doesn't operate like the Senate. It's a, it's a, a little bit more difficult um, to uh, get things done that you'd like to get done. You have to be able to be a good listener. You have to be able to compromise. Uh, you have to know how to work with a lot of different types of people. And that's something that I've always done. Um, some of you from Shirley who are here know that uh, getting that region, this regional school district, was, uh, that made me battle tested to work in the state house. Um, that was not an easy sell. Um, because whenever you look at property taxes going up, it freaks people out. Um, you have to be able to help people to see the long-term benefits of, of things. Um, and so I would very much like to have your support. I would be very happy to talk with anybody afterward. Uh, I have some information. I have a website. Um, 
Jen Benson is endorsing me. Uh, she says that I'm the real deal, and I am the real deal. Uh, I'm just somebody just like you who's been in the community uh, working to improve the health of our community, and I will do that for communities across the district and the state. Thank you, everybody.